just people, for example, Jay Goody, I think people just saw it as that is a logical step at the moment. Is to but why is it? Because they know how how because of TV programs like um, how to solve a, oh, um, how, like how do you solve a problem like Maria? Oh, um, or, um, um, yeah, the other finding one, Lloyd Webber's Nancy. Yeah, finding Andrew Lloyd Webber's Nancy. <laughs> have shown that have increased ticket sales in the west end yeah and other things such other factors such as the popularity of high school musical and um the eventual film of the musical of hairspray has made it popular to go and see a musical now yeah but all those musicals were originals yes they were but at the same time, there is an interest in going to him. And then you find that, oh, people want to cash in on Joe Goody's life. People want to hear more about her life. So it is a cashing in exercise. Yeah, it is a cashing in exercise for, for someone like Joe Goody. But how good is this for the art scene? How good is this for theatre industry in general? That theatre is now being dictated to by the people, by by popular demand. Well, this is, this is always the argument, is should theatre be for the public and um, their demand for what entertainment they want or should it be pushing as art but surely the theatre is agreeing to have these pieces put on of course it because is. they know that people that they're going to make money out of them exactly i mean it would it would be stupid if they didn't put these pieces on that would make them money because but then where does that leave our art scene it leaves our art scene in in a situation where you are more likely to see a genuine piece of theatre that is pushing the boundaries in a smaller theatre that isn't being seen by hundreds of thousands of people nationwide because the, the script won't end up on TV, it won't be toured around the UK, it will only have a limited run. But is it ethical? I mean, what, do, what are we saying to the thousands of students that are coming out of drama school thinking that there's the likelihood that they could possibly put something on, that it could move to the West End, that they could make some money out of this, achieve some fame along the way? Are we just telling them that there's no point in them training because whatever they end up doing will be in order to make someone else money? Again. It makes the theatre industry seem very, very fickle. It is very, very fickle. This isn't this isn't unfortunately the sixties anymore, where the government was giving money for rep theatres and amateur theatre and local theatres to be open. This is now an industry where bums in seats is the main thing. It's, I mean, it's always been the main thing, but bums in seats you have to have an X amount of X amount of seats sold, otherwise you might you get closed within days. Yes, but if you look at the theatre going population mm. and the demographic, it's generally people who are uh, much more wealthy that can spend money to go to the theatre. I don't think many of them will be queuing up in their droves to go and see Jay Goody the musical. No, they probably won't, but I wouldn't be surprised if they do do a Jay Goody musical and it doesn't actually reach the West End. What it does is it tours the country in the smaller theatres, in the provincial theatres. Because that has happened numerous times. But there's already been a, a, a backlash from some some areas of the theatre growing population who don't like the idea of having to go and see musicals that have been put there, prioritised by these theatres, by production companies, by people like Andrew Lloyd Webber, and almost using it as a way of telling the theatre growing public what they can and cannot watch then those people who have the power, who have the money, should put it where they put their money where their mouth is. Well, because, they are. Oh, they are, are they? Then why is it that, um, that Andrew Lloyd Webber and the rest of these people own most of the theatres? If these people really are wanting to see something different, they won't go and see, they won't constantly go and see new plays, new productions. They may not go and see new plays or new productions, but they certainly aren't wanting to see whatever musical is being talked about in the sun this week. No, of course not. Of course not. But these are people... This is the thing. Is You're going the right way to alienate a good amount of people that would have gone to the theatre because those longer-running shows 
that have been long running because of the material, because they have so much substance and popularity, are suddenly going to be forced out because theatres are going to be seeing that you can make a quick buck from opening a show and having it run for six months and having sold out shows every night and then closing and then having something else. We'll get this very quick succession of shows being put on and then put on tour so that something else can come in there. So I don't, I don't think that will happen. And the reason why I don't think it will happen is because of the fact that the really useful company in Delphont Macintosh exist. For example, the Dominion Theatre is coming up to nearly its 10th year of having We Will Rock You based there. And that show should have finished three and a half years ago within that building. Yeah, but they're still they're still getting the revenue. Yeah, they're still getting the revenue. But what I'm saying here is that you're saying packed houses six months. If someone has got a, a show that is packed houses for six months, they are not going to just ship it off around the country. What? But they have done. There's been, especially they do this with the dance musical, um, when we had things like, um, what's it called? In the Hood? Is that what we were called? In the Hood, yes. That was open closed. Yes. But it had huge popular, uh, it had huge publicity when it opened. It was on for a very short amount of time. It was closed and then it was sent on tour. So many shows are going that way at the moment. Because it doesn't have the longevity of an Oliver, of a of a Starlight Express of a cat. But that's only because those production companies do not have the same amount of money that someone like the really useful company has to invest in those shows. If we want to do something, we should be criticising Andrew Lloyd Webber for not producing more musicals. He relies on his back catalogue in order to get him through each year. I agree with you there. There is a serious lack of new material from Andrew Lloyd Webber. And I think that when he brings out his new version, well, his sequel to Phantom of the Opera, we will see a large backlash against him. Because you listen, I don't know about you, but when I listen to Andrew Lloyd Webber's musicals now, uh, especially Cats and Starlight Express, all I can think of is that is music of that time. That music does not sound good now. No. You listen to Star Express, it is very 80s. There are some banging tunes in there, some great tunes. But at the same time, all I can think when I'm listening to it is, this is so 80s, if I took my children to see this show, they would go, oh, this music is awful. I mean, let's talk about Evita. Evita. Which is a biographical piece. Evita is a biographical piece. That, to me, the music of Evita is fantastic. Again, very much like, the actually, the biographical pieces... That um, that Andrew Lloyd Webber had done has done, a fantastic. The music for Jesus Christ Superstar, fantastic, and doesn't age it that much because there are ri I know some of the main riffs are very 70s, but that sort of rock sound has always stayed quite current. It does change, and by changing some of the musical instruments, you get a more current sound. I mean, as synthesizers come back in, you'll get more of a sound. And then you've got uh, Joseph. Joseph doesn't sound dated, it just sounds young. But that's what it's meant to that's do. That's what it's meant to do. It's that's meant to be a young it's, show. That's where, that's it's, where really it's pitched at, isn't that, it? Yeah, it's, where it's, it's pitched at the teenagers and, yeah. and youngsters. It's a family show, so that's what it's for. Evita is a much darker, much more adult show, and I don't think that its soundtrack has aged. But is it only popular because of the film? Is it only popular because of Madonna? No. No, it's not. I, I would say to anyone who would make that claim about Andrew Lloyd Webber's Evita to go on YouTube, type into your little bar at the top, A New Argentina, which is the title of one of the songs...